Okay, good morning. Hey, we're back. Um, we're studying our Sunday school lesson, of course. Um, this is just a continuation until the world comes back in order and we're able to get back together. Uh, we're in still Revelation chapter 2. Uh, we are addressing the church ages, uh, and we've already covered in chapter 2 the, the church at Ephesus. We're down to verse 5, which is where we're going to start today. We know that Jesus has uh, addressed the church. He has, he has given them the, the commendations, uh, told them what they've done right. And uh, then he stops and he says, but you've done some things wrong. You know, we're, we're, all, we're all the same. We're, you know, we, we, we start off strong uh, and then we kind of lose, lose a little bit of steam, maybe a lot of steam in our, in our Christian way. Uh, and that's what happened to the church at Ephesus. They, uh, they got caught up in the world. They started to, you know, lose the influence, started to lose the urge, started to just, well, they lost their first love. Let's, let's read verse 5, Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art falling. He's talking to the, this, well, actually all of us, but also here to this church. He said, remember where you've fallen. Uh, you used to love me a lot more than you love me now is, is really what he's saying. Um, you used to be concerned. Uh, you used to, uh, my salvation burned within you. You, you were very vocal and telling people. And, and he says, you've lost that first love. I'm not as important to you. This is Jesus talking. I'm not as important to you as I used to be. Uh, it, it's, it's more, more or less like, uh, okay, I'm saved. My family's saved. Uh, that's all I'm going to do. I, I'm good now. And we were not to be like that. Jesus said, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. As Christians, once our faults are pointed out to us, whether they're pointed out to us from fellow Christians or the lost person that says you don't act and talk like a Christian, uh, or we just in our own meditation time, we discover that I am not what I used to be. At that point, we need to repent. And that doesn't mean repent for salvation's sake, but repent to be brought back to where you were. Uh, when we've lost our enthusiasm and our love for God and we realize that he's just not as important or salvation or the church or our Christian walk uh, is not what it used to be, uh, at that point, you know, we're convicted of it because we're reminded of it. We need to repent and work our way back through prayer and study. And, and you know, we need to get back up on the horse, so to speak. Jesus tells them, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. The first works is love. You know, lo putting your, your Christianity in shoe leather, as Dr. McGee used to say, Put your, 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 your love for Christ in shoe leather. Take it out there. Let it be known. Let, you know, walk like a Christian. Talk like a Christian. You know, you are a Christian. So we have to be different from the world. Uh, even if sometimes it's uncomfortable. He said, but remember your first love and repent or else. That's the or else that my kids never liked. It was the or else that I didn't like as a kid. Um, he said, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick. The candlestick was the church. That's a represent representation of the church. Remember, we talked about the seven candlesticks. That is the seven church ages. The, and I'll run through them real quick. The, the first church age was the church at Ephesus. Then the church of Smyrna, which we will talk about next time we get together. Uh, the church at Pergamos, the church at Thyatira, the church at Sardis, the church of Philadelphia, and then the church of Laodicea. These are the seven candlesticks or the seven church ages. Jesus says to the church at Ephesus, unless you repent, I will remove that candlestick from where it is and I'll take it somewhere else. That's what the word remove is. Uh, it, it, it means um, to, 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 it's where our word kinetic comes from. It means to, to remove and to put somewhere else. I will take the candlestick that I have in you now and I will move it somewhere else. And what happened, in fact, um, 
the the when the 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 followers of Muhammad or Muhammadism uh, or um, I'm at a loss for words right now. The Muslims, when the when Muslim religion got strong, they actually destroyed the church at Ephesus, and what Jesus said came true. He said, "Either you don't, if you don't repent, I'll remove your candlestick," and that's exactly what happened. Uh, that happened about a hundred, hundred and ten years after um, the crucifixion of Christ. So. I will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. Now, there's the repentance for salvation. And then through our Christian walk, there are going to be times when we just, we have to repent of sin that gets into our lives. We have to repent of lethargy that gets into our life. We have to repent of just being lazy as Christians, you know, you're going to have your, your ups and downs, your high tides, your low tides. Uh, we always want to strive for the high tides where we're close with God. And when we find that we're not, we need to repent. Maybe I should put a tie on. I'm going to preach to you for a minute. There we go. Matches the shirt, right? I'm joking. But we need to repent sometimes and, you know, and, and get back to where we, where we really were. So we've, we've covered verse 5. Um, Jesus is giving them the, the, the uh, condemnation. He's telling them what they need to do. To repent means to change your mind, go the other direction. Jesus is telling them, you're going in a direction that you should not go. You need to repent, turn around, get back, love me like you used to love me, do what you used to do, work for me like you used to work for me. And that holds true for us today. There's not a single one of us that couldn't be better Christians than we are. Doesn't mean that we're lost. Doesn't mean we lose our salvation. But sometimes it means that we take our, our candle and, and we cover it and the light of Christ doesn't get out like it should. And we're all guilty of it. Don't try to tell me that you're perfect because well, I know you're not. Well, I know I'm not. Um, so when you feel convicted, you need to repent. Take it back, lay it on the altar of God, leave it there, and get back to getting busy. Now you'll notice that Jesus repeats that phrase, of, except thou repent, except thou repent, except thou repent. Repentance is a is a part of your Christian walk from now until Christ calls you home. There are going to be times you need to repent of the things that have gotten into your life. Let's look at verse 6. This is interesting. He gave him a commendation at first, then a condemnation, verse 5, and then he comes back and he gives them another commendation, tells them what they've done right. And look at verse 6. But this thou hast, that thou hatest. You know, they say God is love. God is love, but God hates sin. There's no two ways about it. God hates sin. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Who are these people? Who are the Nicolaitans? The Nicolaitans were an early Christian cult. They were a cult. Christianity is not a cult. But within Christianity, cults come out. We've seen that, these cults that come out. Um, you know who they are as well as I do. But we only read about these people here in, in this verse and also verses 14 and 15 of this same chapter. And their name... Um, means that they they held a lordship over the church and members of the church. So the the church leaders would have in this cult would have a position of leadership over um, the folks that sat in the pews, the laity, let's say. And they they rode hard on them. They they and we're not supposed to be like pastors aren't supposed to be you know hard fisted rulers. Uh, pastors are to lead the sheep. And we are to be humble. And, and we're not supposed to be beating people over the head with, with what we believe in. Um, but the Nicolaitans were a cult. And they were a cult that is compared to 
um, the Old Testament when, when, uh, with Balaam and, and, and trying to, to get the Jews to eat foods that were impure. And it's compared to Jezebel and the sin that she brought into it. Um, and it was, um, that was a cult that was bringing sexual sins into the church. And the church at Ephesus didn't want any part of it. And, and they, they would not allow that in. Jesus said, you know, you've done that right. He said, I hate that kind of Christianity. Um, and these folks are, today they would be called hedonists. Uh, we still have hedonists today where it's all about sex. Um, and it's an improper uh, way. So Jesus says, you know, you've done a lot of things right. You've done a lot of things wrong. But one thing you've done right is you have not allowed the Nicolaitans and that false doctrine, that sinful doctrine, to come into your church. And he commended them for that. Uh, and we need to be careful that... Because we got to be careful that we don't compromise with sin. Now, we're all despicable sinners. That's the way we are. But, but I'm a saved sinner. Maybe you're a saved sinner. So I have a place in heaven waiting for me, but sin can still creep into our life. Uh, and, and sin wants to creep into our church and the, the society that we live in now where, you know, sin, sexual sins and all kinds of sins are somehow allowed into the church and it's made to sound like it's okay. It's all right, and it's not all right. People need to be born again, um, and then we have to go by the book, not, not some man's book, but we need to go by what the Bible said. Sin is still sin, period. There's no way getting around that. So, so Jesus says, you know, you've done that right. You have not allowed that perversion to come into your, to your church, and I commend you for that. Then we go to verse 7. He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life. You know, the tree of life was that same tree of life that Adam and Eve had in the Garden of Eden. It's mentioned nowhere else in the Bible until you get to this point right here. When we are at home with God in heaven, we will have access to the tree of life. It's still there. It was removed from the Garden of Eden. Man was thrown out of the Garden of Eden. So Jesus says that in verse 7, he that hath an ear, let him hear. When you've been reminded of where your sins are, when you've been reminded of where you've fallen from, when you've been reminded of where your life just doesn't measure up to what God would have us to do, he says, hear that and repent of that. And then the Spirit saith to the churches, to him that over, you have already overcome. You have overcome sin. You have a place, if you're born again, you have a place in heaven already. You are an overcomer. But we're going to have to overcome some of these uh, stumbling blocks in our life as believers and followers of the Christ. He says, so to him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Think about that. Just think about that. You, you, heaven is a place, to me, on earth, to me. And I've, I've felt this way ever since I was a little, a little boy. Um, but when I go outside and, the, and, and, and it's, the skies are blue and the sun is shining like it is today and it's warm, it's not so warm today, to me, that has always been my idea of what heaven will be like. Perfect temperatures, birds singing, a nice breeze. I know heaven's not going to be like that. It's going to be a place of peace, though, a place of no more pain, no more suffering, no more worry, no more getting old, no more coronavirus. It'll be a place like that. Jesus says, if you hear what I'm saying, if you do what I'm telling you to do, and he's talking to the church at Ephesus, and he's talking to you, and he's talking to me. He said, if you will do these things, I will, or you will be able to eat of the tree of life that's in the midst of the paradise of God. I can't think of a better place for us to be. We're almost out of time for today. Um, you're an overcomer. Next week we'll start 
with chapter 8 in the church at Smyrna. I can't wait. I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.